So this is just a quick video showing how to use 40 converter. So 40 converter can be used to convert um, multi-vendor configurations uh, to Fortinet or uh, as I'm going to do it now is convert 40 gate to 40 gate. So I've got an old uh, 501e, a pair of 501e's here which um, have gone uh, end of life and uh, as such I can no longer license them. Um, which means that I can't get any of the next generation firewall features on the box, uh, which clearly for a firewall is quite important. And as such, I'm going to retire them and I'm going to migrate them across to this uh, 2600, uh, it's actually a 2601. And so to do that, I need the configurations from uh, both boxes. So from the original box, so I'm going to come along here and I'm going to back this configuration up. Say OK. And it's going to download it there. And I'm going to do the same here. And this is the donor, uh, this is the uh, recipient. So the new device, the 2600. So we download that take it okay so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here to 40 converter I've already given it a name as you can see there the vendor uh, source and destination is 40 net so here it asks me for the source configuration so the source is going to be that the destination is going to be this one 2600 okay check those are all the right time and I'm going to hit next and it's going to go off and think about that for a few minutes okay it's going to tell me about uh, various interfaces what it's found it's going to tell me about VDOMs that it's mapping so um, I've got uh, VDOMs on both now some pre-work I did do on the 2600 is that because I've got two VDOMs on the uh, original 501 I went ahead and mirrored those on the um, on the new box now you don't strictly have to do that it just makes it a little bit more seamless um, okay and it's going to give me some error messages here about um, certificates and so forth I'm not worried about those so um, I'm going to say next okay and then it's going to talk about uh, various interface mappings the changes in names okay and again I am not concerned about those but it's worthwhile just checking everything seems fine there the names uh, interface names match each other okay so now I go next Now, also, I don't know if you saw there, but uh, it was talking about the versions of 40 OS. Now, again, I made sure that the 2600 was on the same version of code as the original 501Es. Um, and now it says that everything is good. So I can now download the configuration. Okay. File downloaded successfully. And I should now be able to import that configuration back up, restore. So I'm going to go here, upload, and it's going to be this one here. I'm going to open that, and If there's any errors, it'll come up and tell me there's an error. Otherwise, it will reboot the device. And I should have a running firewall at the end of this. There we go. So it's accepted. It's The very fact that it's rebooting the device means that it did the sanity check. It was happy that everything uh, met the requirements for the destination device, the 2600 and now it's going off and rebooting that so now all i have to do is go switch off my old device and transfer the cables uh, into the relevant ports uh, across to the new device so um, 
That was, uh, hopefully that was quick and brief and showed you what a 40 converter can do. All right, so um, yeah, yeah, any queries, um, by all means, just reach out to your, um, to your uh, representative, your Fortinet representative, but otherwise it's uh, fairly straightforward. And you can see there, if I set new conversion, these are all the different vendors that we can convert uh, from uh, across to a Fortinet. And here we have the final output. Here is the 2600s now up and running. So I've got the HA cluster, as you can see, that's synchronized across. So what I actually did here is I did the conversion on the primary box. Both boxes were factory reset. So I stood up the primary box. I then added in the secondary box. So I didn't push a configuration to the secondary box. I simply added it in as a cluster member, um, allowed the cluster to come up. And then as soon as the HA was formed, the two boxes uh, synchronized. Now, clearly when you add in the secondary member, <clears throat> there is some manual intervention you need to do, um, like setting the priority. Um, <clears throat> Because these are not uh, synchronized across all right um, otherwise they wouldn't be independent uh, in terms of being able to set things like um, uh, you know the priority levels here and whether or not to tell the primary box that it must preempt uh, to take over if um, uh, once it comes back on a line uh, in the instance where maybe it had uh, failed the backup had taken over it's up to you entirely whether or not you want a situation where the primary is always the primary or maybe you want a situation where once the secondary comes up you don't want to have another outage uh, having a flip time <clears throat> albeit the outage is a sub second but some customers just want a very static environment in which case you'd keep the priorities the same and you wouldn't enable preempt but all of that is irrelevant the fact of the matter is is that there is some stuff that you need to do manually um, at the HA level. <clears throat> but once you've done that basic configuration, you simply add in the secondary member, the configurations are synced across and they form um, obviously the HA cluster here. Um, so the, the objective of the video was obviously to show the conversion service um, and this is just showing you the output of that. Um, you can see that I had uh, VDOMs on the old 501Es and those VDOMs have now been carried across um, so here I've got my WAN VDOM which is where I have all my uh, SD-WAN rules <coughs> see all my performance SLAs and none of this I've had to um, do anything to uh, it all, all cut across nicely and seamlessly from the, um, the old 501Es now in the root VDOM I have some switches, um, two switches here, uh, 448s that are being managed, and they were being managed by the 501Es. I didn't need to touch these at all. I, I didn't reboot these switches. I did nothing to them. I simply disconnected the 501Es. <clears throat> I reconnected uh, the 2600s to the switches and the access points that were already running. So as I said, I didn't need to reboot these. Um, but because all the stanza from the 501E came across, along with the serial numbers of the switches, the switches simply carried on working as though nothing had happened uh, northbound, right? So that's the cool thing with the conversion. It takes everything across and any underlying uh, uh, fabric elements that you may have go across with it. Um, now, <clears throat> one of the two things that I did have to do because the serial numbers uh, are obviously different between the 501Es. Um, so here with my 40 client EMS connector, um, here I had to go in and um, activate the 2600s within EMS again because the serial number had changed. All right, um, but that was the only thing that I had to do. So um, yeah, that's a 40 conversion service. And as you hopefully you saw in the, um, I put a, uh, a caveat note and um, those of you who may have been astute you may have seen within the converti 40 converter notice a deprecation notice that 40 gate to 40 gate service was going to be deprecated from the 40 converter application now that's not a problem because that is being cut across to the 40 converter service here 
and this is a one-time license um, and once you've paid it uh, that's it you can use the 40 converter service perpetually after that um, but the biggest advantage um, of the 40 converter um, application is that clearly we can do other vendors um, configurations uh, to 40 gate um, to help you migrate away if, if you're hopefully you're choosing to migrate to a 40 net um, platform and that is where the 40 converter shines now nothing is ever a hundred percent perfect right so you know i'm not going to try and pretend that that it is obviously 40 gate to 40 gate is is completely seamless as you've uh, seen here apart from the one or two tiny things that i've shown you that i had to do manually um you know when you're going from one vendor to another vendor nothing's ever going to be perfect i've worked for another apart from 14f another two of the major um uh, leaders in the networking and security space and uh, you know I've, I've never found a conversion service that will work 100% seamlessly there's always going to be a slight bit of admin that you're going to need to do but the great thing with 40 converter is that it does a good I'd say over 90 maybe even up to 95% of that hard work for you so um, hopefully that was clear hopefully it was useful and once again thank you very much for your time